The coalition was founded in 1974 here in this building of religious organizations on Capitol Hill. The religious leaders that started the coalition were well aware of the problem of gun violence in our society because they had to deal with the victims of gun violence, the families who had lost children from accidents with guns, the spouses who had lost a spouse to uh, homicide or suicide. Memorial Day 2005, uh, my parents were returning from a weekend vacation in Big Bear where we have a house. Um, when they were bringing their boat back to my dad's best friend Steve's house, um, a man who Steve had a restraining order against walked up um, with the intent to kill Steve, shot Steve in the back. He then turned around and shot my dad square in the chest. My daughter Emily, um, age 19, was shot and injured at Virginia Tech on April 16, 2007. She was in her French classroom uh, with 17 other students in, that, in the class that day. Um, seven survived and uh, 11 were killed. My mom, rather than running away, was over Steve helping him and uh, the madman allowed her to get about 10 steps before he shot her in the back and killed her. Um, this guy went on and shot a mother in front of her two children, pistol whipped a pool boy, shot a police officer, and put both of those children that had to watch their mom die um, in the ICU. Very luckily, and uh, actually a miracle in some people's eyes, she survived. She was shot twice in the back of the head. She actually told me several days later that she played dead on the floor and went limp and went as limp as she could so that the other two times that Cho visited the room, he would bypass her, and he did. It's sad that we live in a country where so many places now remind us of mass shootings. I'm standing right now at the site of a, a really gruesome mass shooting that took place in D.C. in March of 2010. Uh, on the evening of March 30th, uh, a group of young people uh, were walking down the street. They were returning, actually, sadly, from a young man's funeral, a young man who had been shot and killed. And as they walked down the street, uh, a group of uh, four young men pulled up in a minivan, stopped beside them, and opened fire with an AK-47 assault rifle and two handguns. Uh, nine people were hit, and sadly, uh, three were killed, ages 16, 18, and 19. The D.C. police traced the AK-47 used in the shooting and found that it had been originally purchased in Maryland. As tough as D.C.'s gun laws are here in the city, uh, criminals and traffickers who want to get guns know exactly where they need to go. Our opponents often say that keeping AK-47s and other assault weapons and high-capacity magazines is part of the freedom that we know as Americans. I'm here to tell you that People threatening the rule of law with AK-47s and high-capacity magazines and threatening congressional representatives and executive branch representatives with firearms has nothing to do with our freedoms. Our freedoms are based on the idea that we respect each other, that we go to the legislature, and, and not the gun to make a difference in America. The fact is, when we have the insane gun laws that we do in this country, and when we allow the mentally ill and prohibited purchasers to continue to get guns without without keeping them in check, then things like this are going to happen all the time. We have gun laws now that prioritize gun industry profits and some very warped vision of, of freedom, uh, really over human life. I'm here at the Lincoln Memorial today. This is one of my favorite spots. Lincoln, of course, put down the most famous insurrection in American history. In that, he said, there can be no successful appeal among free men from ballots to bullets. And what he meant by that is, a free government can't be judged by the rule of guns. It must be by the rule of law and democracy. Understanding and counteracting the insurrectionist idea is an incredibly important part of our work at the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. What has sustained us all these years is our commitment to a quality of life free of gun violence for all Americans. And our understanding of the history as put forward by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. The fact is that we need everyone to get involved in this issue. Gun violence affects thousands of people every year, and you really shouldn't doubt that just one person can make a difference. And one really easy way to make a difference as one person is through a sustaining gift. Our monthly pledge program makes it really easy to do an automatic gift every month, 
It's something that for most people, they'll barely notice because it's the price of one or two cups of coffee. The other way that you can really help that's really easy is that we have a lot of programs where you can help CSGB through what you're already doing. So if you're shopping online, selling on eBay, shopping Amazon, all those things are things that can easily also earn money for CSGB. We have a really great section on our website to help you um, figure that stuff out. I really hope you'll contact me anytime if you have questions about giving. I can say with all confidence that the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence, we're not going to stop working until there's a change and until we start to seriously reorganize our priorities and begin to put public safety first. People charge this debate as a political issue, but it shouldn't be. It should be bipartisan. It should not be a Republican-Democrat issue. This should be an issue where we can all come together and say, if we pass these sensible laws, then we can save lives. And it's that simple.